As a brief introduction, my name is Paola Ramos. You've known me, all of you know me. Um, I'm a professor, a licensed professor of political theory and moral philosophy at the University of Brasilia. I'm a researcher of human nature and social awareness. And for the next three years, I'll be researching human nature within the body talk system, which is about consciousness also and many other things, um, family constellations, and the cardinal method. So it started last year, and this year it's going, it's going well, and I'll start researching more. Um, starting with family constellations, it's important to know who created the modality. His name is Bert Hellinger. He is German. He was a priest of the Catholic Church of the Benedictine Order, which is important because the Catholic Church is so broad and has so many philosophies. And Benedictines are very drawn to work and effort as a way to cleanse your soul and to heighten your spirit. So he has that background, which is important when we understand his theology, because he's a philosopher, a theologist, a priest he used to be, and he was a missionary in South Africa for 16 years. And when he was a missionary in South Africa, he was exposed to the principles of the Zulu culture, and that is where family constellation modality began. Because the Zulus, they are a traditional society, they have very deep knowledge of the soul and the spirit, and they were very reluctant to share that information and that culture with foreigners, especially people who came from so far. It's a delicate subject, right? But they liked Hellinger very much, and they let him in in some of their cultural secrets, so to speak. And Hellinger was fascinated because, as a philosopher of the German tradition, and if you want to dig deeper into this knowledge, to understand Hellinger's thought, my opinion is that it's important to understand what Immanuel Kant had to say, because it's very present in what Hellinger says, and Hegel with dialectics, which is very important to understand the movement of the soul and his perspective. So he has the German background, he has the Catholic background, and he has the Zulus. So it's a multidisciplinary modality that we have here. So Hellinger developed constellations based on that knowledge and also in psychodrama, which I spoke to you a little bit about. So traditional Hellinger constellations in the beginning, they were organizing the family system through psychodrama, so to speak, because we have people representing relatives, ancestors, energies, figures in our lives, right? So he has a lot of disciples. Many people stem from family constellations, and today there are very many different modalities, such as the cardinal method that I developed. Just so you know, a little introduction on, on the context. So. Family constellations, the first thing you need to know about family constellations is that the word in German, technically, is not constellation, per se, it's placement. So it's family placement. Where do you belong in your family system? You have to know your size and your place. And people's lives get out of whack because we do not respect that sacred geometry. I'm using this as my vocabulary. That's not Hellinger's vocabulary, but I see it that way. When you are in your right place, in your right size in a family system, things go well and life flows. We don't have financial collapses. We don't have issues with profession. We don't have relationship issues. We don't have health issues either. But if we are misplaced within the system, life goes out of whack because the flow will not happen. We will have drains of energy all over the place. So what do they serve? What do these constellations serve? They put us back in order. That's the word. They organize life. Okay? So first thing we need to know is the purpose of constellations. I'm going to represent that with this crystal is organizing. It's order. Order within yourself. Order, order within the soul. Second thing that's important to know is that family constellations are based in the soul, and the soul is not individual. 
In Hellinger's perspective, the soul is a collective entity. It is not individual meaning. You don't have your own soul. You belong to a family soul. We are individuals, but that's just an aspect of your nature. You are not completely individual. You are not completely autonomous. You are also an individual. But mostly, first and foremost, you are a collective being. You share a soul with all members of your family. So we're going to use a crystal to represent the first thing about the human condition in having this perspective in family constellations, which is the unconscious collective belonging. So Henninger says that we have three levels of consciousness. The first one is family, belonging to a family system, and belonging to a culture. So before you say your name as your identity, you are a member of your family and a member of your nation, your country, your culture. This is especially important for immigrants. Because a lot of immigrants leave their countries because they hate it, or they've been hurt, or they don't respect the way the country has been going, politically, whatever, and then we deny it, which is a huge problem. It hurts the soul. If you don't honor the first level of consciousness, which is collective belonging, you will have problems. Why? Because Hellinger talks about the laws, the orders of love. That is his specific vocabulary. He says, the orders of love are above our individual will, above free will, above our freedom. We can't choose. It's bigger than us. Like the laws of physics, like gravity, you can't go against this. But he will say, he says something, and I will represent that with a crystal so that it's really, it really comes to your mind. The biggest problem with human condition and with human, humans in general is that we engage in something that he calls arrogance. Arrogance disrupts order. Arrogance disrupts the belonging to the family soul. Arrogance will disrupt your life. And he will say everything, the whole, the biggest problem of humanity, if you have to say it in one word, it's arrogance. And it's within each human being up until now. As if we expand consciousness and we do that to the future generations, we might change that nature. But from what we have today, we've become arrogant. And this is in a lot of spiritual and religious traditions, if you, if you look at it. You know, we have the fall from heaven in Christianity. You know, Judaism, you all have that specific idea. He has developed a system that's very rational, and his word is arrogance. So it's important that we understand. So we have a few concepts here. Family constellations bring order. The first level of consciousness is collective, and it's belonging to family and country, and nationality and culture. And what disrupts our lives is arrogance. And when we are arrogant, we are stuck in the first level of consciousness, so we do not evolve as human beings. We are mostly systemic, and we may think of ourselves as very original and very independent, but a lot, most of us who think of us, ourselves that way are actually completely tied in the net of systemic issues, because we're rebelling against the past of the family, even if we don't know the specific contents and the experiences, we feel those in our hearts because we belong to them. They belong to us. Okay? The second level of consciousness is individuality. So that is when we become individuals. But we can only go from one level to the other if we honor the family system. We have to honor it. We have to make a reference. We have to include that in our hearts. If we don't do that, we will engage in painful experiences. And a lot of people do not engage in the individual consciousness. They're, they mistake that for rebelling against the family. And they think that's very unique. And it really is not. The third level of consciousness in Hattinger's perspective is represented here, which is universal consciousness. What does that mean? That we have transcended 
the rebellion against the family and the country and the nation, that we've become autonomous individuals who do not engage in the entanglements of the family system, and that we move forward. Because it's very tempting to stay in the individuality of the second level, right? But the world brings something more. And if you really want to grow as an individual, what Hattinger calls movement of the spirit, you engage in universal consciousness which is loving every human being as if that person were you and you were the person, which is a higher level of consciousness. You don't have selective affections as we have in our families, right? Because we all love our children and parents and the blood relatives much more than we love the stranger who lives in, I don't know, Alaska, Malaysia, wherever. We don't have the same level of love. The people who develop the universal consciousness, which is universal love, are usually saints, um, monks, sages. They, they really move out of that, and it's not the, the majority of, of the people in humanity, right? So, once you understand these principles, we can see now what are the disruptions specifically that lead our lives to chaos sometimes or to painful experiences. It doesn't have to be that way. A lot of traditional cultures who have this knowledge in their own way, they don't suffer as much as we do. In Western mass societies, industrial societies that we have today. The conscious mind is the tip of the iceberg. We see it, it's clear, but most of the iceberg is submerged underwater. So the submerged part of the iceberg underwater is what? Our unconscious mind. The water is the soul of the family. Eventually, what will happen to the iceberg? It will melt into water. So we are much more collective than we think. We are made of the same material. We are the family soul. It's an illusion to think that the reality is just the tip of the iceberg. So what Hattinger is doing is actually a shift of paradigm, so to speak, because he is changing the way our societies think. The Zulus know this, a lot of other traditional cultures know this, but we don't. We've forgotten all about that, right? So the iceberg image is very important. This is an aging iceberg. It's not white. It's really very transparent because it's already melting into water. That, like old people, very old people, they just melt into the family soul. What are the orders of love? What are the three main principles that we have to know in order for life to flourish? The first one is precedence slash hierarchy. Whoever comes first is bigger. If you ever think you are bigger or more important than an ancestor, your mother, your father, grandparents, great-grandparents, you are engaging in arrogance. And your soul will suffer, the family soul will suffer, and you as an individual will suffer because your unconscious mind knows the truth and you are rebelling against that love and that respect. Hierarchy and precedence are about respecting elders. Most of family constellations is about honoring mother and father. You honor your ancestors by honoring mother and father. You're not going to jump a generation and honor your great-grandmother because you didn't like her grandmother or your mother. You honor your mother and you honor your father. And then, by design, you honor everybody else behind them. The second very important these are, they are more important than the other. They are equally important. This is huge. It's the right to belong. Everybody in the family belongs. And when you hurt that principle, your life will be problematic. If not your life, future generations. That is the biggest thing about family constellations. If you do something that does not respect the right to belong, if you don't pay for it with your body, like a health issue, or with professional issues or problems, your child or maybe your grandchild might 
see that situation and do something to compensate. We'll see about that in a few minutes. So the right to belong is very important. It's about love. Everybody belongs. And the third is balance in giving and receiving. This is important, especially if we look at businesses and uh, institutions, because they have souls as well. Not just a family has a soul. Every group has a soul. All of us here today, we are forming a specific morphogenic field or a soul in another vocabulary. So balance in giving and receiving is, in the same hierarchy, you give 50, you receive 50. With your partner, with your friends, with your husband, with your wife. If you give more than you receive with your husband or your wife, you're not, in, you're not or organized. You're probably acting as a mother or as a child with your partner who should be in a horizontal situation. So balance in giving and receiving has to do with 50-50 in the same generation or in the same hierarchy with friends, professional partners, and more specifically husbands and wives and partners. And when it is with different hierarchies, the bigger, the higher, or the oldest hierarchy gives and the smallest receive. You don't give back to older to ancestors. If you do that, you're engaging in arrogance. You're thinking you're bigger than your mother or your father. This is huge also because a lot of people want to take care of their parents or grandparents and they are bigger. It's all about respect. So people will say, well, they're very old. How, who's going to care for them? You can care for them with respect and not making them your children and thinking of yourself as someone bigger. So it's your attitude that matters. So balance in giving and receiving means 50-50 in the same level. You give to the smallest ones and you receive from the bigger ones. Which comes to another principle here in hierarchy and precedence, which is priority. Younger people have priority. So if you have a situation, I'll explain this very briefly, in which you have a woman who had a child, a daughter. She could not stay married. She had many issues with marriage, so she raised her daughter. Her daughter got pregnant and had a son. Who has priority in the situation? You can answer. The son. But sometimes this mother did not have enough love from her own mother, who is the grandmother and the great-grandmother here, so that lack of love or that wound in the family needs to be rich. She, she can't nurture herself, so she asks her daughter to please take care of her. And priority becomes the grandmother because she is needy. So our attitudes towards older people and younger people, we really have to watch out for that. Who is priority and who is not? And we begin to understand the difference between structure and personality. Structure means what is your size and what is your place in the family system. Personality is someone may be the mother, bigger. This is the daughter. The mother is a difficult person. The mother is impossible to deal with. The mother has personality issues. The daughter can't stand the mother's personality. What happens in this dynamic? The daughter does not honor the mother as a superior person in the hierarchy. The daughter rebels against the mother's personality, and then this person will have issues. So what's the art of dealing with it? When it comes to personality issues, you have to always remind yourself, that is my mother. I cannot disrespect her, ever. Everybody has the right to belong to the family. And they all belong on the unconscious level. We need the iceberg here. Everybody belongs to the family, even those who, are, who were excluded. So inclusion 
is the biggest remedy, it's the biggest medicine, it's the most healing energy that we have in family constellations. Why? Let's say we have a woman who has married a man, okay? They've had a child together. We good? They have a picture in a picture frame in the family mental piece in the living room and everybody's very happy. However, this woman, before she married this man, she had another boyfriend. Let me just make these here so you can get a better view. With this guy, she got pregnant. But the pregnancy did not go forward she had a natural miscarriage. In the unconscious level, they both belong. They belong to the family system. This child wasn't born, but this child exists in the level of the soul. Because in family constellations, the ones who are dead and the ones who are alive have the same status. It doesn't matter. We have four family systems here. Understanding this information, that wants to, these souls want to heal through you. So if you see this iceberg here, it has light behind it. If you as an individual understand your family system, you will bring healing. Once you do your own system's constellations, the healing will reverberate as a ripple effect as well because we're not individuals. We belong to a collective soul. Systemic disorders are arrogance, as I said. You have to know your right place and your right size. And now I'm going to explain to finish what are the disorders of love or the disorders of the system. Because our arrogance stems from what Hellinger calls immature love. This is why I think it's important to understand Immanuel Kant, to understand Hellinger when he talks about love. It's a lot deeper. And children come to the world only knowing how to love. It's their only resource. And Hanniger is very strict about this. He does not really measure his words when he says that the child is poor, resourceless, helpless. The adult is big, resourceful, rich. The child has nothing to give back. And the child has nothing to give back because the child receives from the bigger ones if we were in order. However, the child wants to give back. And what is the only resource that a child has? Love. The, mo the biggest problem in families is that we don't see the wound. It's too painful. We don't want to see. So you bring the experience. You attract the experience so that we will see and then we have to say, I see you. Four generations behind us is the same unconscious mind. We feel what happened to our great-grandmother feels as if it's our own experience. Native Americans talk about seven generations back. So it might be filtered or not. But up until the fourth generation back, it's very vivid. We represent exclusion. It might be a person. It might be a situation. This, a lot of people have that attitude. Mm -hmm. They are clear. They are honoring. Unconsciously, what you are doing is that you are honoring all that happened in the past. Even if there was pain or not, you honor it all. And when you honor it all, 100%, the good and the bad, you consent to reality, and then you're free to go. Mm -hmm. What happens to a lot of people is that they don't honor the past. They are aghast. They are symb symbiotic. They are entangled. The, the word is entanglement. And they do not feel that freedom. They do not feel, oh, it's so wonderful to live, which is our nature, mm -hmm. which you experience. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't. You're in the, in the benign flow of life, as a lot of spiritual traditions would say. The Native Americans, a lot of cultures in Native American um, culture bouts, they live like that. They know that every step they take will reverberate in the seventh generation. Mm -hmm. So everything that I do will have a consequence 
seven generations from now, I will not see the fruits of what I plant, but I will plant the best seeds. So they will benefit from that because they have this consciousness that it's we're all one, especially a family system. What you do will happen to your future grandchildren and so forth, right? So it's a great way to live. Mm -hmm. Thank you.